It's often been said that the way we do anything in our life is the way we do everything. While that might serve us in many instances, sometimes it could really benefit us to slow down and evaluate in the ways are we, that we're showing up if they're really serving us to the best uh, in our highest degree. Hi everyone, Chris Natsky here with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching with your Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week. Next week on June 1st marks a very auspicious day in my life. It uh, is the eighth anniversary of me completing what was for me a life-changing event, the uh, Camino de Santiago. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Camino, it's a uh, 500-mile walk across northern Spain. It's been done for literally centuries. Um, started out with pilgrims making this uh, this walk as a means of penance. Later on, it's become for many people a spiritual journey, and it definitely was for me. A time for a real reflection, where what I did for over almost a month was just walk every day and just be with my own thoughts and, of course, meet some very interesting people and, and see some amazing sights along the way. But one of the things that you might not be too surprised about is, you know, the way that I first started my Camino is I looked at it almost like an athletic event. Being an athlete all my life and someone who got excited by personal challenges, I was up every morning at 5 a.m. I was on the trail by 6. And many times I had walked by 10 a.m. what many people had done in, for an entire day. Uh, in that 29 days that I was on the Camino, I averaged about 7 to 18 miles per day. Now, that was all well and good, but I had a very valuable lesson that came to me in the way of understanding the power of slowing down. So I was on about halfway through my Camino and I was driving ahead and I was walking through a village one day, which really hadn't even woken up yet. And I walked past this particular door opening. And um, as I walked by, it kind of caught my attention, but I kept going about 10 or 15 paces, but then I stopped. I thought, hmm, I need to go back and look at that. And when I went back above the door, it said refuge for the peregrinos or refuge for the pilgrims. And I thought, this is interesting. And I began to walk up the stairs. And just as I walked into the doorway, my monkey mind started. And it said, stop. It's probably a tourist trap. You're, you're, gonna, you're not going to arrive in your next village on the time that you had said. You're going to be behind on your schedule. All these things started playing in my mind. So I stepped back out and I continued on my journey. Well, I got to that next village on time. In fact, earlier than, than most people did. And I got my room and my bed and all was set. But about two days after that, something happened that really made me reevaluate my decision from two days before. I was in a restaurant and uh, I walked in and I saw a number of Canadian and American friends I had uh, made along the, the trail. And when they saw me, they waved me over and they asked me to sit down and have dinner with them. So I was sitting at the head of the table, had just placed my order, and the man to my direct left, uh, a gentleman from San Francisco, said, Hey, Let's all share about our best experiences so far on the Camino. He said, let me start. He said, did anyone see a couple days ago the refuge for the Peregrinos? He said, I went there and it was the most amazing thing I'd ever experienced. I went in and they, they gave me hot tea and they were playing soft music. I sat by the fire. I ate cookies. I read books. He said, it was the two most glorious hours I'd had on this trail. Well, now I'm sitting at the head of the table and remember those days, I don't know, I might be dating myself when Fred Flintstone from the cartoon would get embarrassed and he would start shrinking, right? <laughs> That's exactly how I felt at the head of the table. But then I knew I had to come clean. So I sheepishly raised my hand and I said, I'm going to be next. And I shared with them, everyone in our group, how I had bypassed that op opportunity two days before. And it was so transformational for me as it really impacted the way I did the rest of my Camino. So rather than needing to blast ahead and make sure that I, I got to my next day on time, I still got up early because I loved doing that. It was great to be on the trail by myself, but I walked at a slower pace. I'd stop for breakfast every day at nine o'clock and get a peno chocolate which was a, a chocolate croissant. I'd make sure I'd stop for lunch. I made sure that I was speaking with people on the trail. And that's when things started to open up, when I started learning the lesson of slowing down. So I share that message with you today, my friends, because where do you have an opportunity to maybe slow down and reevaluate how you're showing up in life? 
Sometimes we think we need to maintain this, this incredible pace to get everything done and get all of our responsibilities set. And, you know, oftentimes they say, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. But how many things are we missing because we're so focused on being busy and being productive when we could just be focused on being and really being present in the moment? So there you have it, my friends. There's a little bit of food for thought for you for this week. As you're walking your Camino, whatever that is, whether you're 500 miles in Spain or you're just walking through your regular life, where do you have an opportunity to slow down, get present, and really be appreciative for what you have? So thanks so much for listening. As always, please like, share, comment on this. And if you have any other topics you'd like me to share, please uh, you know, note those in the, uh, in the comment box as well. So thanks so much for listening. This has been Chris Natsky with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching, and we'll see you next time on the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week.